Boom. Ah! Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I am Rex. And this is a bottle of drum from Robert McGrath and Jill Malcolm. Robert McGrath and Jill Malcolm, you magnificent bastards. Look at all the decorations on this. It's got like extra stickers everywhere. So we haven't done our deck drum. No, pineapple, briny, ripe banana. They've already answered. It's getting crazy. They gave us all the tasting notes already. We, what are we doing? Let's just drink it. You know, they're, they're coloring outside the lines of some of the bottoms, like the grooves. Yeah. Or a big groove or grooves or something. It's all psychedelic and yeah. stuff. And I guess we don't even really need to give tasting notes anymore. It's on the bottle. We just read them. Oh. So we can just. Cheers. <sighs> Cheers. Oh, it smells good. Just read the bottle. You can, you can Google it. <laughs> <laughs> this was... Uh, so Ardbeg always does... A, a lot of the distilleries do this, but Ardbeg does a limited release for the um, Festival of Isla. Yeah. Right? Which is... Fa face Isle? Face Isle? Mm -hmm. I can't... I don't know how they pronounce it. Gaelic. F-E-I-S-I-S-L-E. Face Isle? Yeah. Or Face Isle? I don't know. Anyway. Facili. The Facili. It's Fusili oh, Jerry. Oh, no, that's totally it. It's Fusili Jerry. It's Fusili. Million to one shot, dog. Fusili! Okay, so this is the release for uh, Art Big Day. Okay. For the festival. They say all these different things. It's a new expression. And the one thing I really liked about it was um, this is both uh, rum, this is rum involved. Oh. Can you tell? Well, I'll, I'll tell you on the nose. The two main things that jumped out at me were like a, like a peppered bacon. Not surprising. Um, and then like this, the syrup from a fruit cocktail. Mm. Okay, the syrupy note, I could see tying back into rum. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the bit. taste or just the nose? On the nose, I have okay. tasted it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's still super briny, but behind that, there's, there's all these little pretty... These sweet flavors, yeah. Behind the... Uh, and again, I get that. The, for me, and I maybe have to pull off all the other art bags just to confirm, but the smoke character it's leaning a little bit more into the savory bacon direction mm -hmm. than what I typically meaty. remember from Art Bag. Yeah, not as smoky or campfire mm -hmm. more meat, charred meat, barbecue bits and yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's interesting because we've done several rum cask finished ones recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did the Doers a while back. We did the Glen, was it Glen Livet? That was a rum cask one. Yeah. This is nothing like those. On the taste, I'm gonna double down on the black peppered bacon. Oh yeah, yeah. But like a like with a, a sweet syrup note, like a, or like if you had it with a bowl of fruit. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. if you got like you're at breakfast and all you have left is a couple extra pieces of bacon and the, and the fruit bowl they put on your plate. And there is a layer of like the iodine in there, and uh, it's salty too. That's lovely. That's lovely. It's always uh, I'm always still surprised whenever we are uh, still able to get bottlings on the channel after all of the billions of episodes in the world um, from a major brand. Yeah. Yeah. It's because people are sending them in. Uh, well, I'm and saying... We finally get to it. Yeah. I would have thought we would have exhausted all of the... Oh, know, all major brand things. Yeah. But we've all spent the, the last two all... years on craft. Have we? So there's a lot of recent bottlings of major brands oh. we've never touched. Oh. Like, I regularly see on, you know, Scotch and all these guys yeah. that are doing... Like, it's like, oh, I'd love to drink that one. Right. But we've got like 400 craft bottles in line. It's like, oh, I'd love to, oh, we can't do that one either. <laughs> <laughs> Someday, young buck. Someday. But we are exploring craft like nobody's business. Mm hmm mm. And then what is that? It's not. I'm not getting, when they said pineapple, I'm not getting pineapple. I'm not getting the pineapple. If they mean that there's sort of like a citrusy, zesty note, right? I would maybe? say maybe. I don't know, kind of, kind of like, um, like a uh, an acidity. Yeah, but I don't know. Like the, the pineapple flavor for me is a very, very specific flavor. Me too. I'm not finding that. Me either. But I can be argued there's like a maybe a minerality underneath, like the savory smoke notes that also kind of flirts with this zesty, you know, acidic kind of bitiness. Speaking of, the proof is 46% ABV. Yeah. Okay, 92 proof. It's the magic number. It is. Is chill filtering, um, is it expensive? Is there a reason? You have machines for it and you have chill, you have to run it through tanks. Because we it's, know. It's not expensive, but we know compared to everything else. Like whenever you start filtering things out, then you also start losing flavors. Right. 
So if you want to have a proof that is, you know, relatively low, right. but enough to hold some flavors, right. you don't have to run it through a process it of doesn't get cloudy. It doesn't get cloudy, and you're not stripping out flavors. Right. You're hitting it at that 46% ABV. Right. Yeah, yeah. Do you want me to do something? There's some comments. You just, just you just assume that there's just a lot of like your comment monkey. There's just a you just assume that I that I'm here. There's some. There's some comments for you right there. I just, if you could. Kenneth Bogart. <clears throat> Why would you choose that comment? That's so disrespectful. I mean, you chose the comments. Yeah. I mean, Kenneth, he's, 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 he's just, you know, shits and giggles. Yeah. He can, he can burp in the comments, that's fine. Yeah. But you don't have to choose it, uh -huh. this is my point. Why mm -hmm. you would, we can drink, keep it classy, respectable, on a big brand episode like, like I was this. trying to I was trying like to, this like you can't play that fast and loose with decorum I'm trying to fit in with the culture you've created today is decorum the right word I don't know decorum I, but but decorum. De decor is like the uh the... yeah that's pathetic does anyone else enjoy dark chocolate with Isla scotch or is it just a fat guy thing <laughs> Why are you looking at me? I don't think we could ask the expert. But what do you like with? <laughs> what do you? What do you like? Uh, with? The chocolate is is a very oh, yeah. popular pairing. As a matter stuff. of fact, I'm not a huge fan of dark chocolates. Typically, mm -hmm. I actually like milk chocolate better. Yeah, yeah. But with whiskey, yep, dark chocolate all day long because yep. it doesn't get in the way. It contrasts. Mm -hmm. It's not overly sweet. Yeah. yeah. Dark chocolates. There's uh, there's different types of nuts. There's mm -hmm. dried fruits. Yep. Certain kind of dried fruits. And then also, uh, particularly with American whiskey, mm -hmm. a really nice bag of pork rinds. Yeah, turns out. Who knew? Yeah. Uh, Drew Caparo. Nothing bugs me more than buying whiskey and hating it after the first sip. Yes. What do you guys do with the bottle you don't want to drink? Good thing it was cheap. Well, maybe you just spend a little bit more and get something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so there, there's good cheap bottles of whiskey. Here's but. what I found. We, we had this happen in uh, when this was my office. We drank this whiskey that still today is one of the worst whiskeys I've ever uh, consumed for my preferences. Yeah. But it was so dramatic. People want to know. It was uh, the hopped whiskey from oh, California. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, who immediately emailed me after our episode and was like, I'm so sorry you didn't like our stuff. And I was like, oh, <laughs> ah, I feel terrible. Yeah, um, still, anyway, like it, but. but it was so dramatic. I'm I look, thought. I'm looking at a hopped whiskey right there. Oh, yeah, that does it. No, it wasn't that one. This is it a different one? It was a different one. Yeah. Anyway, it was so dramatic that I thought, somebody's going to love this. Right. Because it's so weird. It wasn't just like objectively bad. It was just so dramatic in a specific direction. I couldn't stand it. And so for six months, anytime someone said, I like this thing, I would pour them that whiskey. Be like, hey, I want you to try something for me. Trying it's really rare. Trying to offload it. It's like $150 a bottle, which is totally true. Yeah. And if you love it, it's yours. And it took six months to find somebody who took it and was like, oh, this is amazing. And I was like, that is your bottle. <laughs> you look so generous giving away a thing you don't like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I, that's what I do. <laughs> uh, no, hopped whiskey, I think there's been, at this point, probably, I don't know, close to a dozen bottles yeah, of I was gonna say a people dozen. that have experimented with different types of hops. And I only think one or two of those at least I felt like, oh, this is interesting. This is this. I was a zero. There is some promise. There's potential here. You're not a hops guy. I was over twelve. At any yeah. at any level, you're not a hops guy. But yeah. I, I like the good IPAs. The IPAs. I. It's called IPA. That's how they pronounce it in the beer industry. Yeah. IPA. I wonder if you just cut out all of the. You know, the nonsensical <laughs> bullshit advice and recommendations and pronunciation that we've had across all these episodes. Like, how long would that be? Very long. Right? It'd be very long. <laughs> all the times we just intentionally said things incorrectly. Like, people are still mad that I pronounced Ladao correctly. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Chris well, Ladao. That had to be an accident, though. No, no. Ladao. Ladao. That's how you pronounce it correctly. But did you try and pronounce it? There, people still are writing comments about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Was there an X? As if there? I don't have Louisiana family and know how to pronounce it. No, O-U-X. He's, <laughs> he's, but he's swamp redneck. Yeah, here is, 
here's here's how nerdy on that I am. Uh, uh, you, you know the word faux pas, right? You in a fan boat and overalls. Oh yeah, yeah that's, I could totally do that. Yeah, it's your people. Um, and I'd just be sitting there and like reach over and pull out a knife and just casually knife a gator and pull drag him up onto the deck. <laughs> uh, the uh, here's how both redneck old school Cajun pronunciation mixed with dad joke I've been since I was a kid. My first band mm -hmm. was with my dad, my sister, mm -hmm. and um, it, the band name was Faux Possum. F A U X Possum. Why would you? And the sh the, we had t-shirts that had a guitar with a possum dangling from the neck on a, on a, by its tail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, look, I'm saying... Dad even wrote a song called The Faux Possum Boogie. <laughs> In hell, dude. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it was great. It's the no, it was it? possum boogie. So you're, you're, you're sharing with dun, us dun, 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 why you, had, dun, you never dun, had any shot dun, 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 dun. of being... A normal, well-adjusted, good person. No, I was set on the I set them on the path on which they shall follow. Bullshit. <laughs> it's the path of, path of bullshit. Uh, if you like Ardbeg, you'll like oh, that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Part. Yeah, yeah. His favorite is still the Oop dog. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. <laughs> if you fight me, you fight for us. <laughs> if you steal, you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink. May you drink with us. <laughs>